The year is 1860 in Wichita County. Listen to the cries. Coyotes howl in the lonely prairie darkness. A new baby's first wheels filled her dugout home, carved into a North Texas hillside by her father, steamboat captain Mabel Gilbert. This first native child of Wichita County, named Hetty, soon learns to fear another cry, that of raiding Indians who forced the family to flee their home several times. Then the whoops and cries of battle filled the air in 1872. On the bluff where Memorial Auditorium now stands, Colonel Henry Strong and 10 soldiers rush into combat with 20 Comanche in what is to be the last big Indian battle in this area. The surviving Indians escape across the river into Indian territory. On July 6, 1876, perhaps we hear the cries of celebration from the three or four families settled here, as J.A. Scott has his father's land holding surveyed, and Wichita Falls comes into existence as a town site. The howl of the prairie wind carries other sounds as well. The bellows of oxen drawing covered wagons of settlers here. Settlers such as Joseph Hudson Barwise, who envisions great things for this struggling settlement. Barwise family arrives at this crossroads of old Buffalo and Indian trails in 1878, and he becomes known as the father of Wichita Falls. Listen to the bawling of 1,300 head of cattle driven to this rangeland by Samuel Burke Burnett, who builds the first frame house in Wichita County and establishes ranches totaling 450,000 acres. Perhaps the sound that means the most to this area in the 1880s is the piercing signal that proclaims progress. The shrill whistle of the railroad, the Fort Worth and Denver. It comes carrying 225 visitors for the day and a half long town lot sale on September 27th. 1882. The railroad carries growth, prosperity, and future. A future that will be shaped largely by two emerging leaders, men with grit and know-how, childhood friends who become brothers-in-law, Frank Kell and Joseph Alexander Kemp. The scene when Kell first moved to Wichita Falls from Clifton, Texas in 1896 was vastly different from what he had seen on his first trip here in 1883. He had visited the town with Joseph Kemp, his future brother-in-law, who settled here that year. Since then, the town's population had multiplied several hundred times. Kemp had become an influential pioneer builder and had established his general merchandise store and wholesale grocery, had been elected county treasurer, and had helped organize City National Bank, serving as its president. Brick and stone buildings gave a more permanent look to a city which had been largely tents and dugouts a few years before. By the time Kell arrived, Wichita Falls was a bustling little city of 2,000. Wagons and buggies clattered down dirt and pegged wooden streets in the hub of downtown along 7th Street. Cowboys and Indians mingled along the sidewalks outside the stores and saloons. The secret of this prairie town's survival when many like it had failed, was the railroad. A far-sighted Kemp had made sure Wichita Falls did not remain the end of the line for the Fort Worth and Denver. He started building tracks to outlying towns, connecting with other railroads. In 1895, Kemp, Kell, and a third partner chartered the first local railroad, the Wichita Falls Railway Company, which connected with the Missouri-Kansas-Texas Railroad, the mk and and Henrietta. The year Kell arrived, he moved his wife, Lula Kemp Kell, and his five children into their first home on Scott Street, across from the first Alamo school. Like other Wichitans, they probably shopped at Warden Stanley General Store, the second brick building in the city, or at the Cream Bakery and Confectionery. And they swept the street's dust out the door with a broom corn broom made at the Wichita Falls Broom Factory. The familiar rumble of wagon loads of corn, wheat, and cotton harvested from the surrounding fields were the sound of promise to Frank Kell, whose first love was the grain industry. Kell began his famous partnership with his brother-in-law by purchasing Wichita Valley Milling Company and renaming it Wichita Mill and Elevator Company. Kell's milling operation later handled one of the largest payrolls in town. The company's Bell of Wichita Flour was marketed worldwide. 
Whether or not Kell knew he'd be part of Wichita County's history, he was committed to creating the best possible environment. His industrious ventures with his brother-in-law caused people to believe that success came if one would think like Kemp and work like Kell. Their thinking and hard work concentrated on those things that they knew the town's future would demand. Water, agriculture, and transportation. And water was primary. Drought was a continual threat, so the two searched for a reliable water source. In 1901, they chartered Lake Wichita Irrigation and Water Company. They then dammed Holiday Creek and constructed the largest man-made lake in the state, 2,300-acre Lake Wichita. The familiar clopping of hooves from horse-drawn carriages and wagons was still common around this time. As doctors, the dairyman and the iceman made their house calls. In 1907, Kemp and Kell established an electric facility, and Kell headed the subscription drive for the new opera house, now the Wichita Theater, which was built in 1908. Kell also became president of the board of directors of the newly formed Times Publishing Company, which produced the city's first daily newspaper. You are now standing in the house of one of these famous forefathers, Frank Kell. He bought this property on the corner of 9th and Bluff Streets for $5,000 in 1908 and built his home here in 1909. This neoclassical style red brick home was a haven on a hill to the Kells and their seven children. It also was a gathering place for state and national leaders. Today it is a museum of heirlooms that echoes history. A history that is intertwined with the lives of a family who helped shape it. If you listen carefully, you will hear strains of Dixie, Frank Kell's favorite song. Although each of his six daughters took piano lessons, not one of them learned to play it. And so Kell kept the tune reverberating on the baby grand player piano, which was one of only a few in the city. After a long day, the family looked forward to a restful time after supper. They all retired to the master bedroom where Mrs. Kell and the girls did needlework and Mr. Kell read aloud to his family. Also in 1909, Kell and his brother-in-law built a two-story pavilion with a cafe, skating rink, and dance hall at Lake Wichita. This was soon to become the city's main resort. Local residents flocked here for fun, as did tourists from all over Texas and Oklahoma. The sounds of the skates and dance bands, the cheers of the baseball fans, and the squeals from the amusement park filled the air. As a hotel, summer cottages, an arcade, a merry-go-round, a roller coaster, a small Ferris wheel, and a baseball park sprang up around the pavilion. That same year, Kell extended his 9th Street electric streetcar line out to the pavilion. At a time when the in-town speed limit was 10 miles an hour, People zipped out to the amusement park at speeds approaching 60 miles per hour on the trolley. In 1910, Kemp and Kell built their offices, the city's first five-story modern office building, now the Holt Hotel. Also that year, Kemp established Wichita Falls Motor Company, which during 18 years of existence produced more than 10,000 trucks used in 87 countries. Life for the Kemp and Kell families, and for all Americans, changed dramatically in 1917, when radios brought another sound. The president's voice announcing the declaration of war. The United States had entered World War I. Kemp and Kell led the way for Wichita Falls to obtain an aviation training camp for the United States Army Signal Corps. And so, Call Field was established. Kell also made property available for two National Guard companies. His daughter, Willie May Kell, organized a Red Cross chapter here in Wichita Falls and then served with their Foreign Service branch in France. Meanwhile, her brother Joseph served in the infantry there. The war years also brought another challenge to this area, drought. Farmers suffered tremendously. After three years of it, Burke Burnett farmer S.L. Fowler decided to sell out. But at his wife's insistence, he decided to drill for oil before selling. It was a big gamble, and their pursuit quickly became known as Fowler's Folly. 
The excited cries of oil reached the Fowler family on July 24, 1918. Their well had filled several tanks and was gushing a stream of oil down the cotton rows. Fowler's folly gave birth to the Burke Burnett oil well, and with it came the clamor of chaos. Voices loudly bid the leases up to $1,000 per acre for all of the land within three miles of Burke Burnett. Swarms of people and tons of equipment choked the streets, and the noise level grew as the city became a forest of derricks, many of them gushers. The oil boom of the 20s dramatically altered the population in the downtown streetscape of Wichita Falls. Sounds of construction abounded as 8th Street became known as Skyscraper Row. Four new skyscrapers, including the Kemp Hotel, were built. The population rose nearly 400% to about 40,000 people. The city that Faith built was bursting at the seams. Progress continued until the stock market crash of 1929, which devastated the economy. But Kell continued helping his city and was named Outstanding Philanthropist by the Chamber of Commerce that year. In 1937, Kell gave a large sum to help match J.G. Hardin's grant to build the new Hardin Junior College, now Midwestern State University. In 1940, when World War II dominated the scene, Kell was again instrumental, this time in establishing Shepherd Field. Until he died in 1941, at the age of 81, Kell remained energetic and enterprising. At the time of his death, he was chairman of the board of the Missouri-Arkansas Railroad and president of six major companies. Kell family members continued living in the beautiful home now known as the Kell House until 1980, when Miss Willie May Kell died. At that time, the home and most of its original furnishings were purchased by the Wichita County Heritage Society. Now listed in the National Register of Historic Places, this Texas historic landmark invites you inside to glimpse the past, to hear the echoes, to touch the life and times of Frank Kell and his family, leaders who not only touched, but changed the face of early Wichita County. <laughs>